Yeah, we talked today about uh, enhancing um, security with systemd in terms of secure web tokens. Um, my name is Philip. I'm working on a consulting firm part time, and uh, basically, I'm an expert in cybersecurity. I worked a lot of uh, on a lot of Linux topics, and nowadays, I started recent, oh, recently. I started to work at uh, Binally. Uh, you're probably aware of this company, U.S. company startup. Um, yeah, but let's get started. Um, Basically, uh, out of this presentation, I want to gather some feedback about my proposal. I will come later to this uh, POC proposal. I also wanted to better understand how the stacks work together, and that's why I did the presentation. Yeah, unfortunately, Leonard is not here, but probably he will catch up later on that. <laughs> I also would like to get some kind of approval from the system D maintainers if the POC proposal is fine. Uh, and I can do it this way. And I also wanted to gain some better connection to some people in uh, component involved in this uh, project, basically, and finally get started on the project. So I have finally time next week is my vacation. Um, the motivation itself, I come to that word I'm talking about now, as I can show you a short video, is basically showing a password manager. And this password manager requires my smartphone um, basically talk, to log into the password manager or get some like utilization of your passwords. And so this is a quite new one. It's from Germany, it's probably quite unknown, but password managers tend to have a master password, but nowadays they changed to the idea of having passwordless authentication just by using some kind of biometric authentication in terms of like fingerprint, face unlock, or uh, even just your phone for that. And uh, yeah, that was my motivation. Oh, sorry, I need to switch here to the next slide. Um, and then there's another video here. For sure, we could already do that um, with the YubiKey, for example, right? So we have this like external like hardware security modules or whatever security tokens, how you call them, and you can utilize that. But um, that's uh, external token extra, and I wanted to have this passwordless, which just biometric things, and with a basically security module already inside my laptop here. Uh, so let's take a further step here. Oh, sorry. Yeah, now finally changed to the right screen here. So what I want to do basically is if I look at this password manager, what it supports, it's a security key for sure, YubiKey, but I don't want to use that. It's an external token. I want to use Windows Hello and uh, Touch ID from macOS is already there. So you can use this. It does this biometric stuff. It's all integrated in your operating system already. So we don't need any extra keys. We can do passwordless authentication, no master password. It's super nice. And I wanted basically to have the same for Linux. And so how that works on macOS, the short uh, information for that is like it's Touch ID is a fingerprint sensor plus a T1 or T2 security chip on the modern MacBooks. And you have a passwordless with, uh, without external hardware then if you utilize that. And the same goes for Windows Hello. They use also face unlock and other biometrics, whatever. It, you can even enter a pin in combination with the TPM2 uh, security chip. So, but what is there for Linux at the moment? So for Linux, there's only um, the browser plus, plus external Fido compliant device like a YubiKey. You can store pass key somewhere in your password manager again, in some kind of password manager. It's also super strange, right? You say pass key in the password manager again, but anyway. And then you can use your smartphone, what I currently do, and it sucks. I hate to, to take out my smartphone every time I want to have access to some, let's say, some passwords. Yeah, so how we do this kind of password uh, passwordless authentication without external hardware under Linux. Um, so that's basically the talk about. And uh, what first of all, we want to utilize the TPM 2.0 because it's widely um, the standard at the moment. It's a lot of systems, so my laptop has it. I think every one of your laptops might have a TPM if it's at least uh, like not a MacBook. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's uh, probably the case. Um, yeah, the security token gives us extra functionality, but we just basically need the, the security token functionalities, and it gives us the same guarantees as any kind of other authenticator or token. So the TPM is, let's say, hardened enough that it works that way. Um, and I would say if you don't have a discrete one on your hardware, you can also check inside your BIOS or UFI settings. Sometimes uh, the platform is able to give you a firmware TPM, so you can just enable that and then you also have a TPM 2.0, which is integrated in the Southbridge. So it's even more safer as when you have a discrete one. But anyway, so your device is already, basically the, the result is your device is already bring, uh, brings an authenticator with it. So we, why do we have an external one, right? We don't need it. It's already inside our laptops. 
Super nice. And then we go to the next one. So we, in order to access this like security token, we need some kind of CTAP2 inter, like, interface, which is a protocol basically talking to these authenticator tokens. It's basically uh, specified by the FIDO specification, and um, it allows with the new, newest uh, version of it, version two, basically passwordless authentication and multi-factor authentication for biometrics, which is super nice. This is what we want to do, right? Passwordless and bio biometrics. And there's also the libfido2 library under Linux, so it's also integrated in systemd already, so super nice. Uh, we can make use of that. Um, then we come to systemd. Everyone knows what it is. I don't need to talk about it. The reasons why I basically choose systemd to, to, um, to utilize for, for that is because it has a huge adoption. So a lot of distros have systemd, uh, systemd, and we anyway probably need some kind of daemon to implement that, so it's a good fit there. Sure, we could have our own, like, let's say, daemon, and with an extra project, but it's better if it comes out of the box. I love things out of the box. They should be just there, and this improves the us usability of the people, and the distro maintainers, maintainers can adopt it. Systemd already supports the libfido2 library. <laughs> There's TPM functionality in there, so why not, right? So that was my idea. Um, another component, so it's not like systemd can do everything of it, so there needs to be more components. So there's a web out library, basically, web out n library. Um, it's written by um, a guy called Alfio. He's working with some people together in the genome community uh, on something called ECD credentials portal. We come uh, one slide later to that. But basically, um, this web out n is basically uh, a library communicating with the browser over Dbus API. And um, it's basically also used to communicate to the authenticator token. So, and it all does uh, is important things in terms of like there are some security things like there's privilege access and restricted scopes. So you can have like origin where like you want only that specific things goes away as you expect. For example, if you access a specific URL, it should be only like to, uh, pass keys for this URL should be only available to this URL when requested, right? And so you have uh, scopes and origins which are important. And you can, aside from that, you can also have privilege access where the user has to verify himself as well, like we are biometrics, so it's called privilege access. There's some kind of words in the specification. Overall, the integration you can see on the right side, there's also this portal, um, but yeah, we come to that now. So the XCD credentials portal is basically just the UI front end for the Linux desktop. There are a lot of portals nowadays. It communicates all this stuff. It's more like a high-level implementation and enforcing security guarantees, um, just one part of it for sure. And it also provides transparency to user how to utilize it. So for example, I use this Hyperland window manager I, like, because I do everything myself. Like Normal people just probably use <laughs> Fedora or Ubuntu distribution. But let's say uh, there this type of portal is integrated. I would do it myself then. And with that portal, I can finally utilize all this stuff uh, together. So libwebout n is basically part of that. And um, yeah, it does all these processes and um, let's say how to handle all this like access when a user presses on a, like once say I want to have the password and then this stuff is basically communicating to the authenticator over the libweb out and, and then it comes back to you and ask for fingerprint for the biometrics and so on. So this is what it does. I hope that was somehow understandable. And it's connecting to credentials providers like your password manager. Um, so there was a plan. I, I don't know if it's still currently in, like, I mean, this is what I've tracked from the community already. There was some guy in uh, Innova called from the Gnome Secrets community. He made this kind of view. Uh, it's probably still changing and will probably um, change over time. But basically, all this together is, is in there, right? We have the exited credentials portal, uh, the libweb out and which basically gives us an API to, to our authentificator. And the system, systemd service basically plays a FIDO authentificator. So what is the YubiKey becomes systemd with the daemon. So um, my idea was to basically do a POC version one where we just like uh, see if that works out and where we can do some testing and basically iterate on that then later on for the full integration. Um, I think this is a uh, kind of good idea because there are a lot of changing components from the from the XD, XDG desktop portal side, and I still need to get in contact with the people, which is kind of hard, but uh, I hope some people are here, maybe not, but uh, we will figure that out later. 
Um, yeah, so my proposal for the version one. So first of all, we need to look a bit about the security. So there are some threat model requirements. Um, there was some good input already from Leonard saying we want probably a per user a process uh, for all this like um, communication with the authenticator that shouldn't be shared, like a shared socket is not a good idea, so we could look, uh, use some kind of varling service. I didn't look into this yet, but it should be possible to do it with that, he told me, so I'm, uh, I'm okay with it. Process for isolation reasons is, uh, like, uh, so it's for isolation reasons that makes sense because you want to have basically a differentiation between multi multiple users, right? You don't want to have uh, the situation where one user can access uh, the keys of the other users. Um, aside from that, for sure, we need somehow to, to encrypt the uh, credentials, whatever type of credentials there are. So there's already systemd credsd, so um, this is kind of helpful. I come later to that. And we can use the TPM 2.0 basically to protect um, these type of credentials. Um, there should be user session, which is available for sure. Um, there's uh, probably a pin usage because this libweb, like this CTAP2 specification and libweb out N requires also pin usage. So if a user wants to have extra security, not only being logged into his like session, he basically needs to enter a pin for specific credentials. Right, you can do that. It's possible. I think it's overkill. I would make this optional, but uh, because it's already protected by disk encryption, the TPM maintaining this key in the user session. So there's and probably also even additionally to that through the HTTP desktop throttle by biometrics. So I mean, there's a lot of authentication layers already. So and the origin and scope must be enforced, but this is probably more an internal like in implementation detail uh, thingy. Um, the important part is as well that the communication between this lib web out end and the system D service is then basically encrypted or somehow protected for sensitive like um, API calls. And uh, yeah, we probably need also secure registration of, uh, of this type of authenticator, but this needs to come from the libweb out end community. I probably, after I get done the system D stuff, I may switch to their site and to do that stuff there. But uh, let, let's say I want to get started with the system D service first. <laughs> that makes it easier from uh, bottom to the top. Um, yeah, so let's uh, talk more about the systemd service. So I propose systemd passkey D. I'm not sure if the, the name is good because you also call it credentials D whatsoever because it's not only ma maintaining passkeys, it might also like maintain any type of credentials, passwords, uh, like OTP, to, uh, like OTP or whatever uh, you can imagine of. And um, so what I propose is basically we use the systemd creds implementation. I'm not sure if we can just extend it or we will probably um, make our own daemon and just use, utilize the code because it's already good design for this purpose and uh, use the right cryptography for it. It has socket, socket activation support, which is nice uh, because then we don't need to have the daemon all the time running and uh, consuming resources and blocking the TPM support. <laughs> uh, not support, uh, so t blocking the TPM interface, basically. Um, this is not a good idea. And and um, yeah, we can make pin and credential, uh, pin and credential is basically optional. Um, yeah, we also need to provide a CTAP2 interface for this like web, lib web out N. So this is the most complex part, I guess. So the internal stuff we can figure out already with systemd implementations, but there needs to be a CTAP2 interface for the lib web out N. And I would like to use uh, the sockets with the var link uh, as Leonard proposed, and uh, see that we get the libfido2 uh, for that, uh, to, for help, for I don't need to implement everything myself. And we need some kind of session encryption. I need to dig into that. There's some kind of protocol in the CTAP2 specification I might use, might want to use that. Um, yeah, but there's even more stuff. So um, I need to create some API calls. I gaze at that from the, from the XCD credentials portal guys. So probably that these API calls might change, but this is basically a list I identified at the moment, which is important. There might come more. Um, there might be additional um, needs for signature operations. Uh, this came from Alfio's side. I hope I can figure that out. And we definitely need to support a large number of keys or blobs, uh, whatever the people want to store, but there, because there might be a lot of passwords or credentials you want to store. Uh, but that shouldn't be a problem with system decrets. D. And then uh, system decrets. Uh, and um, one important thing, which is probably not liked by Leonard, but I will do, is the integration of UIT because I want to have it for testing purposes. Because in order to test it, I need to use ECD credentials portal, and I don't have that yet. 
the, also the problem is it doesn't build. So I <laughs> try to check it out, run it, but it's, it's complicated. And so in order to have a shortcut with a web browser, where I can also utilize over web USB and the CTIP2 interface, um, basically our daemon, I will add this, uh, this U8 uh, for t purely testing purposes, basically. Yeah, that's uh, my idea. Yeah, thanks for listening. Um, I hope I'm on time. Okay, perfect. So, if you have questions, feedback, or ideas, please hear. Uh, I have some reference as well, so if you want to get uh, into this topic, please take a photo of this uh, screen, or you, I can check it later out when I upload the presentation, um, if you want also be part of that. Ah, I have 10 minutes. Then I was faster than expected. Probably I've slowed down a bit. Yeah. yeah hello. Yeah. Um, so you say, uh, I, the last time I looked into this was a few years ago. Uh, what I understood back then was that um, the thing with pass keys was that they need to be stored on the security chip thing. Like, there was a, like, this thing with YubiKeys that they became kind of useless because you needed to store stuff in the YubiKeys and there were only so many slots. Yeah. So how do you solve the thing where you say you're, so, you're storing it on the disk and encrypting it with TPM? So first of all, we use the TPM, which is a security key. So it has a, nearly the same like, level of security as maybe not from a certification point of view, but it's quite similar uh, to the YubiKey secu hardware security, let's say. And aside from that, the new specification, CTAP2, doesn't enforce it anymore, as far as I know. That's what I read in Alfio's blog post, so they removed this requirement. So you can, uh, you can store them on disk and encrypt them with the TPM. That's yeah. a lot. Ah, I see. Oh, cool. So that's why. I mean, we could also put them into the TPM and VRAM or whatever and make it more complex. I'm just saying, like, um, th this already, I think, is now easy to do. Yeah. Other questions? Yes. J just to work out the, the difference there, you are wrapping the encryption key with the TPM but doing the encryption on the CPU, is there a reason not to use a key that is actually within the TPM so that there's no ability to exfiltrate that material? So uh, we, we could do that as well. I mean, there, I, I didn't start with implementation yet, but uh, systemd creds is, in my opinion, good enough. If we already use hard, like hard disk encryption on modern systems with all distros, right, we don't need to basically do this kind of, of trick of having like really encrypting it. Um, let's say the, the binding is already done by the TPM involved providing this kind of storage where you can just drop the, the key and it's automatically encrypted. And this is good enough. And then additionally on that, we have even full disk encryption. So that makes it like we lay on layering or it's already two times for sure. If no one, if someone doesn't use full disk encryption, then the TPM would be basically the protection against that. But yeah. So, so it is then worse than passkey on, on Windows Hello on the Apple thing because they are all backing it via secure chips. Um, and the other thing I would say is it does then mean that your keys are exfiltratable. I think it's worth looking into actually backing it by the TPM instead. If you've got a TPM in the system, you're assuming that, then you, you may as well get there in the end, even if it's not the first implementation. Uh, sorry, sorry, I didn't get it. So can you speak a bit about that? You're, if you're, yes, I, I accept all of these things are fine for systems at rest, but if I get root on the machine, I can exfiltrate the key material. Um, given the presupposition of a TPM existing, it's worth going the extra mile, I think, and then using the TPM to back the key, which then means it wouldn't be. Uh, for, for sure. I mean, that depends the credentials on... Credentials do that. Like credits yeah. are, uh, credentials already do that, probably, yeah. So I need to look into that, but the, but the thing is, like, also... I mean, this is... If you are in the system already, there's always a way how you can key lock stuff. There's no way you can protect against that. And uh, so if you already have access to it, it will be really hard to pull that off. So in terms of security, for sure, we can do that. But it, it's not so crazy. Like, attackers can really figure out, exploit specific services, look into the communication channels. There's no real protection against that, right? Because even if you, if you have the stuff inside the TPM and you would also store the blobs there, and someone just enters a pin, you can, like, catch the pin and basically and decrypt it, right? And so because the pin needs to be communicated to that point, and the authentication is not mutual on all ends. You can try to do that somehow, but it's really hard to pull that off. You can make it harder, basically, for protecting the communication channels. But anyway, but this is probably a good idea. Yeah. I agree with him, though, because it uh, would, I mean, when you do Fido, it's nice to have really short-lived um, Fido sessions and then have to re-click them or whatever. So 
Sure, somebody uh, has pwned your machine, they exfiltrate your, your OAuth token and they can impersonate you for a while. But it's nice if you don't completely lose that key because since they had a Linux exploit or whatever, they also exfiltrated the whole key material. It's nice if they can only get the currently signed OAuth token. Yeah. That, that, I mean, that makes sense. I will take that into the account. Well, thanks for the feedback. I will probably come up then with some changes as Other well. questions? Oh, there's a hand. Yeah, uh, yes. Yeah. So, as far as I understand, uh, the other platforms that implement pass keys, um, their fingerprint sensor support uh, actually handles, um, the, the fingerprint sensor actually does crypto be it through the secure enclave or on Windows, I think they do some weird virtual machine thing. Um, so the fingerprint sensor can actually do a kind of YubiKey-like, it sent a challenge and it can respond to the challenge. We don't do this on Linux yet. Uh, I, I know some of the fprint D people are working on it. Um, once we have that, would you be looking into how to tie that into uh, this credential system so that not only do you need to be logged in and have an unlocked user account and everything that system decreds provides, but then on top of that you're also going to have to, uh, th the fingerprint sensor would have to answer a challenge from the TPM so that um, w the fingerprint sensor would actually act as another layer of security there. Because as far as I understand XDG port, the, the portal would have to basically just get a yes or no answer from the fingerprint sensor and it's not really adding an extra layer of security there? So I, I mean, if this, if this uh, is available and I can utilize it to improve the security, for sure I go this extra mile. It's not, it's not a problem like, as the two people here already said, like it's probably more safer if we do it this way and add additional layers of security, but I just want to get started with something. So I will iteratively work on it. This is just version one. There's good fit feedback for version two, basically, but I just want to have something because I have the feeling we need first to get something ready and then we can improve the model, how we utilize it and how we protect against specific like attacks and um, this is already I think okay-ish it still like opens the door for an, if you like inside the system then attacker might steal stuff away we can also start to use confidential computing to basically run the entire thingy in some kind of enclave right and uh, like but this is like making it more complex it takes a long time until we get to this point but as soon as we have it for sure I, I'm open for for more security features Okay. Uh, um, yeah, I, I just feedback on the approach. I think system decreds is the right place to use this. So I, I think I agree with your approach there, because um, we will like I work on uh, HomeD, and we will be tying HomeD, for example, into system decreds as well. It will only get more secure as a backend uh, for you to use. So yeah. Uh. Of course, I like a lot of what I've just heard, but I, I quickly wanted to say to Adrian, like regarding the fingerprint stuff, um, uh, the drivers are not there, right? Like uh, uh, this is some proprietary stuff uh, between Microsoft and, and uh, uh, yeah, so, but I wouldn't hold my breath. And I wouldn't hold my breath regarding Secure Enclave, some generic stuff on Linux, not gonna show up anytime soon. Like, uh, like in completely other t areas, we have been discussing what we can do there. Um, in, in, in Microsoft and, and elsewhere, but I would not hold my breath that we anytime soon will have a design like like on Windows, which is actually kind of nice about some 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 enclaved uh, VM that does the key management. But it would be good if we have, but don't count on it anytime soon. Don't design for it right now. That's just a waste of brain cells. Okay, thanks for the feedback. Any other questions? We got one minute. One minute. I think we are done. We have done. No one Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks for listening.